Hey guys, this is Malinki. Welcome back to my channel, Voice of Malinki. Today we will talk about yeast artificial chromosomes or yaks. And if you are new in my channel, please subscribe my channel. And if you like my video, please do like, comment, and share my video. So, in our last lecture, we have seen what are artificial chromosome vectors. And we have seen that there are two types of artificial chromosome vectors. One is BAC or bacterial artificial chromosome and the other one is YAC, yeast artificial chromosome. So in our last lecture we have already talked about BAC. Today we will talk about this YAC. Okay, so yeast artificial chromosomes or YACs are artificially constructed vectors that are used for cloning DNA in yeasts. So in our previous lectures we have seen that we can use plasmid, we can use cosmid, we can use back, all our vectors used in our gene cloning methods. Now in case of plasmid we can insert the foreign DNA fragment up to 25 kb. In case of cosmid, it is 45 kb and in case of back, it is quite longer that is 100 to 300 kb. But in case of yak, this is largest. We can insert up to 200 kb DNA fragment that is 2 mb right that is really huge. That's why we use this yak vector whenever we want to clone such a big fragment. So a DNA fragment of 100 to 2000 kb can be inserted in these vectors. Let's see what are the components of yak. Two copies of a yeast telomeric sequence are there in yak. A yeast centromere is present in yak and it has the ARS that is autonomously replication system. This is a system where DNA replication begins in eukaryotic cells and it also has origin of replication that is ORI. This is of bacterial origin. Now you will be surprised why it also has ORI. That we will talk in a minute. Next is multiple cloning site it has that MCS and at last the selectable markers for both bacteria and yeast. And how does it work? So to clone large piece of DNA into yuck both must have compatible sticky ends right. Now let's check the diagram here we can understand better in this case. So this is our yak vector. You can see it has two telomeres and between two telomeres it has the restriction cut site that is BAM H1. Then it has the MCS. We know that the MCS is required to insert foreign DNA in a vector. Always MCS contains different restriction enzyme cut sites. Those restriction enzymes cut that site and make a free space where our foreign DNA could be inserted. It has the selectable marker for yeast and it also has the selectable marker for bacteria. It has the ARS, it has centromere, it has bacterial ORI. So this is the construct. And this is our target DNA that we want to clone in the yak. The first thing is that we can maintain the yak in the bacterial cell. Since in a bacterial cell, it is easy to maintain the yak. That's why it has ORI because in bacterial cell it gets replicated. That's why bacterial 
origin of replication it requires. And that's the reason why it also has selectable marker for bacteria. So it is maintained in the bacterial cell. Then you can isolate ya from bacterial cell and you can do the downstream processes. So after isolating yak from bacterial cell, do linearize it with this BAMH1. This is the restriction enzyme which cuts here. Whenever BAMH1 cuts here, the yak vector gets linearized just like this. Telomere ends are in these two terminals. Next step is digest this yak vector with a restriction enzyme that will cut the MCS. So in this case, generally we use eco R1 restriction enzyme. So eco R1 will cut the MCS and will make a free space just like this. And now we have the target DNA. So digest this target DNA with eco R1 only. Then only it will make two compatible sticky ends, right? So whenever this eco R1 digests this target DNA, we have different fragments. Among them, suppose this is our gene of interest. So eco R1 cuts here and here. And we have our gene of interest or GOI. Since we don't want the whole target DNA, right? We want a particular portion of it. So now in our hand, we have eco R1 digested yak vector as well as eco R1 digested GOI or gene of interest. So we can just mix them and use an enzyme DNA ligase and ligation will happen. So the GOI will be inserted in this free space, in this MCS. And this is the yak vector contains this GOI. Now what we can do? We will transform yeast cell using this yak. And this yak is now inside the yeast cell. Then yeast cell undergoes cell division. This yak vector also replicates and both daughter cells get the yak vector along with the GOI, gene of interest. So we can replicate yak in this way in yeast cell. Okay. Let's see the theory portion. So, yak vector is initially propagated as circular plasmid inside bacterial host utilizing bacterial ori sequence. Yak vectors are isolated from bacterial host for downstream processes. The circular plasmid is cut at a specific site using restriction enzyme BAMH1 to generate a linear chromosome with two telomere sites at terminals. So that I have already explained in my diagram. The linear chromosome is again digested at MCS with different restriction enzyme. In this case, it is eco R1. The target DNA is also digested with same restriction enzyme that is eco R1. The target DNA is then ligated into yak vector using DNA ligase enzyme. The recombinant vectors are transformed into yeast cells and screened for the selection markers to obtain recombinant colonies. Now what are the applications of YAC? So YACs were originally constructed to study chromosome behavior in mitosis and meiosis without the complications of manipulating and destabilizing native chromosomes. But now we use yak for different purposes. By inserting large fragments of DNA, the inserted sequence can be cloned and physically mapped using a process called chromosome walking. 
so when we perform chromosome walking you use large fragments of dna and that time you need yak to insert those large fragments yaks are useful in making genomic dna libraries for human mouse arabidopsis etc you know that human mouse arabidopsis they have large fragments of dna so that's the only purpose we use yak since it can accommodate larger fragments yaks are extremely popular to analyze entire genomes again the explanation is same why we use yak to analyze the entire genome since it accommodates longer dna yaks are used to make transgenic animals also and what are the disadvantages so only one vector occurs per yeast cell in case of plasmid we have seen that it can replicate continuously and we can get hundreds of plasmids in single bacterial cell but in case of yak you will get only one yak vector per yeast cell that is one disadvantage and yak sir less stable compared to plasmid and cosmid so this is all about today's lecture i hope you liked the lecture tell me how do you like this handwritten series and if you want the pdf notes of this topic please check the first pinned comment or the description box thank you